Hello friends, this video on neat current electricity is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Question number 7. A and B are two points on a uniform ring of radius R. The resistance of the ring is R and angle AOB is equal to theta as shown in the figure. The equivalent resistance between points A and B is so here small r is the radius of the ring and capital R is the resistance of the overall ring. Okay, so we have to find out the equivalent resistance between these two points. Now first try to understand the question that capital R is the resistance corresponding to this entire ring. So capital R is the resistance corresponding to 360 degree. So corresponding to angle 2 pi, capital R is the resistance. So corresponding to angle theta, what would be the resistance? R by 2 pi into theta. Correct? So that means for this part, the resistance would be R by 2 pi into theta. So this would be the resistance corresponding to this part. Now when I say equivalent resistance between point A and B, so does that mean only this resistance? No, this also means this resistance because this is also point, also the part between A and B. So what would be the resistance corresponding to this part? How, what is the value of this angle? This angle is 2 pi minus theta, right? So therefore, corresponding to angle 2 pi minus theta, the resistance would be R by 2 pi into 2 pi minus theta. So that means corresponding to this part, the resistance would be R by 2 pi into 2 pi minus theta. Right? So now you have to calculate the equivalent resistance between point A and B. So that basically means that this is point A, this is point B. So from A and B you have one resistance like this, you have another resistance like this. That is what the combination is. You see, between A and B on one side you have a resistance, on the other side you have another resistance. So this is basically a parallel combination. So one resistance is R by 2 pi into theta, the other resistance is R by 2 pi into 2 pi minus theta and these two resistances are in parallel. So therefore, R 1 by R equivalent will be equal to 1 by R by 2 pi into theta plus 1 by R by 2 pi into 2 pi minus theta. So this can be written as 2 pi by R theta plus 2 pi by R into 2 pi minus theta. So now here 2 pi by R is common. So 2 pi by R into 1 by theta plus 1 by 2 pi minus theta. So this can be further be written as 2 pi by R into 2 pi minus theta plus theta divided by theta into 2 pi minus theta. So plus minus theta will get cancelled. So therefore 1 by R equivalent is equal to 2 pi by R into 2 pi divided by theta into 2 pi minus theta. So this is 4 pi square divided by R theta into 2 pi minus theta. So do we have any such value? So this is 1 by R equivalent. Therefore, R equivalent will be equal to R theta into 2 pi minus theta divided by 4 pi square. So if you look at option D, it is R by 4 pi R square into 2 pi minus theta into theta. So that means D is the right option. So you see a lot of time this happens that the moment you see equivalent resistance between A and B, you just think that you have to calculate the resistance of this part. But basically you need to calculate resistance of this part, resistance of this part and then equivalent resistance of the two. Let's now look at question number 8. A carbon film resistor has color code green, black, violet and gold. The value of resistor is. Now one simple way to find out the correct option is the moment you have gold at the end. Gold means 
a tolerance value of plus minus 5 percent. So just see which option has plus minus 5 percent and which is that one? Option C. So therefore C is the right option. So even without calculating the entire resistance value. However, if you want to calculate the entire value for green it is 5, for black it is 0, for violet it is 10 to the power 7. So this makes it, so these three taken together makes it 50 into 10 to the power 7 ohms. So this in turn can be written as 500 into 10 to the power 6 ohms or we can write it as 500 mega ohms. And then you have gold. So this makes it this plus minus 5%. So 500 plus minus 5% mega ohms is the right option. Question number 9. In an emitter, 0.2% of main current passes through the galvanometer. If resistance of the galvanometer is G, then the resistance of emitter will be. Now, even before we start solving the question, here this question is all about a galvanometer which has been converted into an emitter. And how do we convert a galvanometer into emitter? By putting a small resistance. Why small? Because we want to measure current. So we want more current to pass through that small resistance. So by putting a small resistance in parallel. So basically if this is your galvanometer, you put a small resistance which we often call a shunt in parallel to the galvanometer. Okay, so now here it says that 0.2% of the main current, so main current is I, so 0.2% of the main current passes through the galvanometer, right, so that means IG is equal to 0.2% of I, which is equal to 0.002 I, so this much current passes through the galvanometer. Okay, and we have to calculate the resistance of the emitter. That means we have to calculate the value of S. So that's all we need to do. Now, if the value of IG is given to us, then how much current is actually passing through the shunt? That is I minus IG. Right? So we can say that current that is passing through the shunt is equal to I minus IG that is equal to I minus 0.002 I which is equal to 0.998 I. So this much current is passing through the shunt. So now we have to calculate. So in order to find out the resistance of the emitter, we, we should know the current flowing through this uh, shunt and also the potential difference across the shunt. That means we need to find out the potential difference between these two points. Right? So potential difference, let's call this point as A and this point as B. So potential difference between A and B would be the same as the potential difference across the shunt. Right? So first let's calculate the potential difference or voltage, whatever you call it, potential difference between points A and B, which will be equal to I into R. I means IG into R that is G. So this would be IG into G. So IG is equal to 0.002I into G. So this is the potential difference between A and B. So now let us try to calculate the value of resistance S. So the resistance is equal to V by I which is equal to what is V? It, it should not be V by I. It should actually be V divided by I minus IG. Right? Because that is the current which is passing through the shunt. So V divided by I minus IG. So I minus IG value has been calculated as 0.998I. So this is 0.998I and what is the value of V that is the potential difference is 0.002I into G. So I and I will get cancelled. So this is equal to 2 by 998G which is equal to 1 by 499G. So this is the value of the shunt. So G by 499. So option A is the right one. Question number 10. 
A galvanometer having internal resistance 10 ohms requires 0.01 amperes for a full scale deflection. To convert this galvanometer to a voltmeter of full scale deflection of 120 volts, we need to connect a resistance of, okay. So this question is all about two different scenarios. Now, as we have learned the basics that how do we convert a galvanometer into a voltmeter because voltmeter is to measure voltage, right? So that means we want very small amount of current to flow so that there is very minimum voltage drop, right? So for what do we do? To, to make small amount of current flow, we need a high resistance and we connect it in series because in series the voltage across the uh, resistance would be different than the voltage across the galvanometer. So this is how we will convert a galvanometer into a voltmeter. Now when we say full scale deflection, so full scale deflection actually means the maximum deflection. Now with a voltmeter the maximum deflection will be obtained when the voltage is maximum. So with maximum available voltage you get the maximum deflection. So basically the circuit in this case would be somewhat like this. This is the galvanometer. You connect a high resistance in series with the galvanometer such that the same current flows through the galvanometer and the same current flows through the resistance as well. So this is going to be our circuit. Right? Now the current that would flow through the galvanometer is 0.01 ampere for full scale deflection as is mentioned in the question. Right? And what would be the voltage? So the potential difference it is also given as 120 volts for full scale deflection again. So that means the maximum voltage or the maximum available voltage for this voltmeter would be 120 volts. So that's also given to us. Okay. So now let us calculate the R equivalent for this circuit. So the R equivalent would be V by I which is equal to 120 divided by 0 0.01 which is equal to 120000 ohms. So this is the equivalent resistance of the circuit. Now what is the equivalent resistance of the circuit as such? So the equivalent resistance would be this high resistance which we have connected just now plus the resistance of the galvanometer. Right? Now what is the resistance of the galvanometer? It is given in the problem as 10 ohms. So therefore R will be equal to R equivalent minus G that is 12000 minus 10 which is equal to 11990 ohm and this resistance is connected in series. So which is the correct option? A is the correct option. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for free quality education. You can learn with a simple four-step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons, you can ask your questions, you can refer notes and you can take a free online test. We have content for class 6 to 12 on physics, chemistry, mathematics and biology along with practical videos. So please subscribe to our channel for daily updates. Thank you.